Recently, Israeli Prime Minister Naftali Bennett announced new rules of engagement with Iran called Operation Octopus. He said, in the past year, the state of Israel has taken action against the head of the terrorist octopus. The days of immunity in which Iran attacks Israel and spreads terrorism via its regional proxies but remains unscathed are over. I think it's well overdue for both Israel and Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrainis, all of these countries that have been victims of the Iranian regime's proxy activity to start to hold Iran accountable rather than the proxies. Some see a ratcheting up of Israel's covert and even overt operations to thwart Iran's nuclear and conventional missile and drone programs. It could explain the mysterious deaths recently of a number of Iranian nuclear scientists and military leaders. Another example, Israel's recent attack on the Damascus airport, which Israel sees as a major conduit of Iranian weapons on their way to Hezbollah in Syria. Now Israel says Iran is threatening to retaliate by kidnapping or killing Israelis in the region, and especially Turkey. We're currently witnessing Iranian attempts to attack Israelis in various overseas locations. The security services of the State of Israel are working to thwart attempted attacks before they are launched. We will continue to strike those who send the terrorists and those who send those who send them. Our new rule is, whoever sends, pays. Israel's defense minister, Benny Gantz, announced a regional cooperative Middle East air defense led by the U.S. It can help with anything related to Iran's attempts to attack countries of the region using rockets, missiles, cruise missiles and UAVs. This program is already operative and has already thwarted Iranian attempts that I spoke about on other occasions, both here and in the Middle East in general. With the collapse of the Israeli government, Middle East expert Eli Konim says Israel is entering a dangerous season. The regime can, can see all of this as a moment of vulnerability for the Israelis and, uh, and try to take advantage. My hope is that the Israelis, as much as they're dealing with elections and cobbling together coalitions and all that, that they do keep their focus on what they call the existential threat to them that the Iranian regime poses. All this comes as the Iran-U.S. nuclear deal seems on the brink of collapse. Senators on both sides say it's unlikely Iran will agree to any new deal to limit its development of nuclear weapons. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem.